Hi everybody, welcome to our next lecture. And this lecture is going to focus on bonds, equities, and interest rates. So we've got a lot packed into this lecture. Um, the, the roadmap for what we'll be discussing is as follows. We'll start by looking at bonds. And I'm going to provide some definitions, talk a little bit about issuers and holders, uh, provide some examples, and then we're going to really focus on the valuation of bonds. Uh, and then I'll take a, a couple minutes and talk about interest rates, which are inextricably linked to bonds. And then finally, we'll spend uh, a little bit of time on equities by defining them, talk a little bit about the stock markets, and then valuing equities, and then some conclusions on equities. Okay, so let's begin. All right, let me start with a basic definition of bonds. We can think of a bond as a type of a security instrument that's used to raise capital by an issuing party or an issuer. A bond typically has the following characteristics. It's got a principal amount, which is to be repaid on a specific date in the future. This is also known as the face value or the par value. The payment date is known as the maturity date. Um, and many bonds have regular coupon payments, which are paid out either annually or semi-annually or quarterly, depending on the nature of the bond. The coupon rate is the interest rate used to calculate the coupon payment and is a percentage of the principal amount. So, for example, the coupon payment is just going to be the coupon rates times the principal. And I'll give an example of this in a little bit. Um, so a bond is a legal debt obligation. Failure to make payments as required can result in legal recourse by the, by the bond holders. A bond, these are just some additional features. A bond can be callable by the issuer. If, uh, if the issuer, given certain parameters uh, that were agreed upon when the bonds were first created, uh, a, a bond issuer may be able to require the person holding the bonds to return them to the issuer. Um, typically the issuer is going to have to pay some type of penalty for this kind of an early recall. Uh, and then there's other features, many other features actually, that bonds can have. Let's just talk a little bit about who issues bonds or the issuing party. Right, this is the party that has made the payment, uh, the, you know, the, the promises to pay such and such based on the bond's spe uh, specifics. So the issuance of a bond is known as a bond offering. Um, the holding party, or the bond holder, is the party who currently has possession of the bond. Right? We've got the issuer and the holder. The holding party receives the payment from the issuer, if they're coupon payments or the final principal payment. Typically, the holding party can freely sell the bond to a third party, and all the rights will transfer. There are very active bond markets, for example. So you can think of a bond as essentially just, just a loan. It's a type of a loan. There's a principal and an interest amount. All right, so here's a quick recap of the definitions. There's a principal or face value. There's a maturity date, a coupon rate, coupon payments. Bonds are legal debt obligations. They could be callable. There's the issuing party or the issuer, the bond offering, holding party, etc. Let me talk a little bit more about issuers. So who are these people? Bonds are issued by various types of parties. So, for example, the federal government, the U.S. government, right, this is in the news a lot of all the debt that the U.S. government has, these are related to bonds. And the federal government issues bonds when there's tax revenue, when there's revenue shortfall, right, when the taxes don't cover all the expenses. Uh, state and municipal governments will issue bonds when they have specific projects, if they want to. Uh, fix a road or build a structure, for example, they might issue bonds. 
corporations issue bonds. Um, and then you'll see bonds related to the money markets. Uh, there's also more complex bonds like mortgage-backed or asset-backed securities, collateralized debt obligations, and so on. Right. So let's talk about who are the bondholders. Those are the issuers. Right. All these are the issuers. And now who are the bondholders? Well, there are a variety of people who hold bonds. Um, pension funds, right? They basically you buy bonds typically when you're trying to preserve long-term value. That's a, a common reason to buy bonds. Um, so pension funds want to preserve value over long periods of time. Insurance companies, right? They want to they want to save for that rainy day or the fiery day when they have to make payments. University endowments are large buyers or holders of bonds. Uh, there are bond funds, for example. Uh, individuals might buy bonds, and so on. So I want to give an example of the magnitude of the bond market with respect to equities. Uh, so the bond market is it's really enormous. It's a, it's a large market globally. Uh, this was uh, this, these data are a little bit old, um, but as of 2009, the face value of total bonds outstanding globally was about 82 trillion. I think uh, as of 2012, it's more like 110 trillion. It was depressed a little during the recession. Um, but compared to equities, equities, global equity stocks uh, was about 44 trillion. So it's almost twice as much debt out in the world as equity. So it's a, these, are big, these are big markets. These are very important financial securities. Just uh, as another example, total, U, total global GDP in 2010 was roughly 62 trillion. So there is 25% you know, more debt than the, the, the world generated in GDP for what that's worth. And by the way, the US, uh, to put this into context, the U.S. GDP at the same period was 14 and a half, roughly 15 trillion dollars, or, or almost a quarter of the world's GDP. So, you know, there's a reason that the U.S. is such a, a an important country in the world, right? Such a powerful country, really. It's got a quarter of all global GDP that it's generating. Um, visually, you can see there's. You know, twice as much debt as equity. So this is, this is one of the reasons why this is such an important area in finance. All right, so here's an example. Um, a company wants to raise money for a new project and it decides to do so by issuing bonds. And the characteristics of the bonds are as follows. So the, the bonds have a principal or face amount of $1,000. The maturity date is in five years and there's a coupon rate of 5%. So the coupon payments are made annually at the end of the year. Um, so the coupon payment, what is that gonna be? It's the face value times the coupon rate, right? The principal times the coupon rate, which is simply $1,000 times 5% or $50. So every year at the end of the year, the company's gonna pay $50 to the bondholder. Um, so just, no, we're discussing the characteristics at an individual bond level. This is just one bond. Um, but companies don't just issue one bond. They, they will issue a large tranche of bonds. So maybe they, uh, maybe in this example, the company is issuing, they're trying to raise a million dollars. So they issue a thousand of these bonds. Um, even that small, but you know, as an example. So in this case, if they were issuing a thousand, that means you know a thousand bonds times a thousand dollars is a million dollars. And uh, uh, if the bonds sell for a thousand dollars in the market, th then the company raised a million dollars. So that begs the question: What do bonds sell at? Um, well, the 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 answer is we're going to explore that. And let's just say. Initially, some bonds will simply sell for their face value. So in the case from the prior example, the company would convey the bonds to the buyer and 
the buyer would pay a thousand dollars to the company right it was just sold at its face value so now assuming the buyer holds the bond to maturity the buyer would receive five annual payments of fifty dollars those coupon payments and a final payment of a thousand dollars after five years in other words the buyer receives the annual interest payments and then and then they get their principal returned again this is it's just a loan so now let's talk more specifically about valuation for bonds and you'll see how this relates to the time value of money that we developed in our earlier lecture all right so in the previous slide I said that some of the bonds are issued at a price equal to their face value so now many bonds are issued at a price that's either higher or lower than their face value so ultimately how does this work ultimately the market supply and demand right, de determines a bond's price. So sometimes bondholders are willing to pay more than face value and other times they're willing to pay less. So uh, we, can, we can make sense of what I'm saying by using the time value of money technique to try and value this stuff. Um, so the issuing party, we, we look at this from the perspective of the issuing party and the issuing party specifies how much and when they're going to make the payments. Uh, the market then applies an interest rate which discounts the specified payments to the present. So let's take a look at our prior example. We've got a face value of $1,000 to be made in five years, right? Uh, coupon rate of 5%, $50. And here's our timeline. We've got five years. We know years one, two, three, and four, fifty dollars is being paid out. And then in year five, there's another fifty plus the thousand dollars of face value. And our question is, is how much is this worth today? What is a buyer, what's a fair market price? What's a buyer willing to pay to receive fifty dollars next year and then fifty dollars the year after that and so on and through year five and then they get their thousand dollars back. All right, so this is just a time value of money calculation. All right, let me start it on a different slide. And now, well, in order to answer this, we know from our time value of money talk that we need to discount this. So let's just say we have uh, an interest rate of 5%. Now, just as an aside, um, I'm really, these are really, uh, the I equals 5%. The terminology, I should really change this. Um, to differentiate from the coupon rate and then this discount rate, we're starting to get a little more rates into our expl explanations, and it can be a little confusing. So this I equals 5%, this is our discount rate. Right? This is the denominator of our time value of money equation, uh, which is completely different from our coupon rate. The company specifies the coupon rate, and the market or the buyer specifies what they believe is an appropriate discount rate. So let's just say an appropriate discount rate is 5%. Uh, and here's a spreadsheet of the TVM analysis for this. All right, we've got years 0 through 5, our payments, $50, $50, and so on, through 1050 um, We have to take the present value interest factor or calculate the present value interest factor. We have to discount those payments. Right? And you can see over time uh, the fifty dollars becomes worth less and less over time and you know and then in year five the thousand dollars and fifty is only worth 823 today that's based on this discount rate of five percent when you add up all the present values when you add up all this stuff you get a thousand dollars so that's actually interesting right this is the face value so in this case, the bond, the buyers of the bonds, the bond holders, would be willing to pay $1,000 if they believed an accurate discount rate for this promise of, uh, you know, for, from this issuer for these payments was uh, $1,000. So, you know, company X says, I'm going to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you this, um, these amounts. 
and the and the buyer the bondholder says okay well I'll discount that at 5% and I'm willing to pay you $1000. So now uh, just to recap right so the so based on the TVM we'd be willing to pay $1000 to receive five annual payments of $5 and a final payment of $1000 after 5 years assuming an interest rate again this is a discount rate of 5%. When the bond valuation, uh, that's the price of the bond today, is equal to the face value, we say that the bond is selling at par. That's just terminology. Um, so now, what happens if the market applies an interest rate, a discount rate, of 7%? How much would the previous bond be valued at? Well, let's do our time value of money. So there's our timeline. Now we have a discount rate of 7%, and we can do our spreadsheet, right? We use 0 through 5, there's our payments, and now our interest rates, our interest factors are, uh, you know, they've changed, and the present values of each of these is less. So if you add it all up, the, present, the total present value is $918. So we would be willing to pay $918 today for this promise of payments. All right, based on, the uh, based on the TVM, we'd be willing to pay $918 to receive five annual payments of $50 and a final payment of $1,000 after five years. All right, assuming an interest rate of 7%. So in this case, we say that when the bond valuation, when the price of the bond is below the face value, we say the bond is selling at a discount to the par value. All right, we're not willing to even pay face value. There's something going on. Um, you know, maybe we think the company is risky. So you know, we don't want to. We don't want to pay a thousand dollars. Will it really pay us back? It's promise. I don't know. There's, there's something going on. So now, let's look at the opposite situation. What happens if the market decides that the interest rate or the discount rate should be 3%? So how much would the previous bond be valued? Here's our timeline. Our discount rate is 3%. And let me just uncover the whole analysis. In this case, the present value today of all these payments is 1,092. So based on the TVM, we'd be willing to pay $1,092 to receive five annual payments of $50 and a, payment, and a final payment of $1,000 after five years, assuming an interest rate of 3%. So in this case, when the bond valuation is above face value, it's $1,092, we'd, we'd be happy to pay $1,092 and the face value is $1,000. So we say that the bond is selling at a premium to par value, right? That's just that's the terminology, but it makes sense. It's like there's some kind of premium. We're actually willing to pay more than the face value. <coughs> All right, so let me just quickly summarize these three examples. All right, here's our bond. Uh, we have a coupon rate of 5%, face value of $1,000. This is all specified by the company, by the issuer. Now, what happens if we have a discount rate of the following? Discount rate of 3%. The bond price today is 1,092, and it's selling at a premium. If we have a discount rate of 5%, the market applies a discount rate of 5%, then the price of the bond today is $1,000, and it's selling at par. And if the discount rate is 7%, then the bond of the price today is 918, or it's selling at a discount to par. All right, some conclusions on bond valuations. So first of all, we use the time value of money to value a bond's price today. I hope that that makes sense. And you can see how that all works. The time frame, the coupon payments, the final principal payments are all specified by the bond issuer. These represent the future cash flows from the bonds. 
Right. This is the numerator of our time value of money analysis. The market, the bond, these are the buyers of the bonds. I call it the market. These are the buyers or the bond holders will then apply an interest rate or a discount rate to the above cash flow to calculate what they view as their present value of the bond's price today, what they would be willing to pay for that bond based on their own analysis. Um, so just to link this to what we talked about in the time value of money analysis, uh, in the time value of money lecture, valuing a bond is really, it's the same as calculating the present value of an annuity, those are the coupon payments, um, plus the, the present value of a single payment at the end of a period. Right, it's the five annual payments of fifty dollars. Those are the that's the annuity, those are the coupon payments, and then the final payment, the face value, in, you know, in five years in this case. That's the present value of the bond is equal to the present value of an annuity of the coupon payments plus the present value of the face value. Uh, that's just another way to think of a bond. Uh, in an Excel or in a financial calculator. You can use the, the time value of money valuation functions the, to, to do this.